Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I'm pissed right now. This, um, I got this G.I. Joe a couple days ago at Midtown Comics, and I was happy because I just wanted a very simple um, comic about roasting <laughs> this uh, character, a 300-pound uh, Samoan woman who Aubrey Sitterson, a extreme far-left, proud socialist, uh, who IDW insanely put as writer of G.I. Joe. Uh, G.I. Joe is not a real Amer <coughs> American hero, and they make the point that he's not an American team uh, multiple times. The problem was that, uh, two things. Um, this character is barely in it, so I didn't really get that great roast that I wanted. But uh, I did read the book, and I read the letters page, and it's so much worse than you can be believed. So, um... For those, uh, you know, most people I talk to, um, especially who watch the channel, they've been in comics for like three, five years. I don't think you realize what's happened to IDW. Not only has it gone far left wing, and I've done videos before where they lost 91% of their revenue. This is effectively a, <coughs> a suicide pact. Um, I'm not sure who to blame it on because this guy Carlos Guzman and, and Tom Waltz on the other book They've both been on the franchise for the last, like, at least six years. Um, so maybe it's coming from publisher Ted Adams. I don't know. but um, So a lot of people have roasted the hell out of this art style. This is Giannis Mil Milo Janis. Uh, I follow him on Twitter. He's actually a really good artist. I like his stuff. I, I really like Shiro, Masamuni Shiro. So he it might be hard to tell from this, but he has a heavy Shiro influence. So I like this. But... Um, <coughs> Just start off with the kid. Awful. Awful. You have a morbidly obese woman. This is the exact opposite of G.I. Joe. Vaguely pointing to the left. I don't know. What is that expression? Is that a smile? Is, is she talking? There's breath coming out. And then the two guys who you think of as G.I. Joes are just kind of... Pa oh, I forgot. <laughs> That's actually a girl looking more closely. Yeah, not, yeah it's awful. Um, so we get a little weird flashback. Uh, it's a whole page wasted just to reprint a page. And it doesn't really say anything except for a bunch of weird stuff happened to a bunch of gender indeterminate people. So then, even though it's only issue five, they already have a fill-in artist. So we get to see the team. And they're super diverse. Um, Scarlet G.I. Joe Commander. That, you know what? That one's fine. She's had ninja training. She's been a Joe since the beginning of the team. Um, here's one of the problems. Roadblock. Roadblock is not Roadblock. He has the name and the shape of Roadblock, but he's basically some purse puppy. He's, he's Scarlet's purse puppy. Rock and Roll, who they kind of... They make him the shotgun specialist. That's not a job in the military. <laughs> it's... Oh my gosh. This is from someone who plays Call of Duty and thinks that makes him a military expert. So you got Snake Eyes, of course. But then you got... <coughs> no. <coughs> Where is it? You got Helix, who's a manic pixie dream girl. Cover girl who seems to be overweight in this. Oh my gosh. So you got a half-female team. Okay, yeah. Then they're fighting an OMG monster from the my second favorite... Uh, episode of Totally Spies. And then, of course, we get um, a comment about gender. Actually, we don't currently have any reason to suspect this specimen is male. It could be asexual for all we know, which would make for a really... Yeah, what? We get it, Aubrey. You have to think about race and gender all the time. It's a freaking G.I. Joe book where they're fighting a giant doofy monster. First of all, it's kind of annoying because that really isn't a G.I. Joe thing. Second of all, I can't tell what... The, this is just this mismatch. Uh, one of the things IDW did when they destroyed their own company is they decided to cross over all the Hasbro titles um, into one giant universe, and it does not work at all. Um, they even have a whole scene where Rock and Roll is accompanying Skywarp, I think. And Skywarp's like, why aren't you helping? He's like, what? I'm a guy on the ground with a freaking gun. What am I supposed to do? So, um, then the, uh, the robot, the giant, the robot that's as big as this thing can 
not defeat it, but he can get some like blood or something on this. And then we cut to this freaking monstrosity. What is that? Is that human? Well, I know she turns into a monster there, but what that is? Okay, so we cut to the uh, <laughs> half female GI Joe team's uh, headquarters, and then um, <coughs> they're basically saying. This girl's been infected by a dire wraith, so she can't be trusted. But then it becomes this weird kind of almost like a... Like it's like symbolically for like illegal immigrants or something like that. So Doc is like... So in medical personnel, she's been infected. She should be in lab. We need to find out what she's capable of. She can't be trusted. No one wants to say it, but I will. Doc's a dire wraith. And then freaking woke, uh, paralyzed guy says... Half a dire... Yeah, that's... That's my uh, radiator here in the background. Half a dire wraith that was born here on Earth. And you weren't even there. You didn't see what her dad said to me. What? What? It's... it's what? I want to see a vampire where it's like... We got to kill Professor so-and-so. He's in a vampire. It's like, um... He's an American, okay? And he's a bisexual. Like... <laughs> And you didn't even tell here what his uncle said to me at the Christmas party. Like, what? What does this make sense? And then she turns into a monster right there. And they're like, um, yeah, uh, do you see what I say where she's infected? Um, and then, uh, then we cut to, oh gosh. So Aubrey Sitterson is like this trash indie writer who just writes this try hard stuff. And this is totally the type of stuff that would pop up in an Aubrey Sitterson uh, book. So I'm like, weird Charles Manson guy. Oh my gosh, you put, you know, runes on some bread. Isn't that crazy? Then, uh, Rock and Roll goes to visit him and he hypnotizes him. And then we get some weird stoner stuff. Like, what is this? This is not G.I. Joe. What the hell? So then we cut back. Oh yeah, you remember the G.I. Joes? Let's squeeze them all into one panel. By the way, their expressions with like these doofy smiles absolutely does not match what's being said. Um, so uh, then, you know, they got a, I don't know what this is, a horn or something like this. So then the, what is, this is G.I. Joe? Okay, fine. So, uh, Scar, if I'm right, and I'm always right, we could predict where they're going to pop up. Uh, so then, uh geez. It's not even half women. All the it's all women talking, and then we get Cover Girl, who's a model, but, but apparently she's she's a plus size model now. Yeah, this is yeah, that's how. So they're like, uh, Roadblock, you're sitting this out. Something we need to discuss. You got it. Of course, the two hundred and fifty pounds of muscle black guy is sitting it out, but the all the women are going. And then this is how women talk. Gotcha. I'll take this madman if he promises not to go too nuts on us. What? Why are you talking like this is like a potato sack race at a company picnic? So then they go and they attack the OMG monster. Now, I want to show you this. Giant transformer. Ineffective. Whole bunch of missiles. Ineffective. Uh, this guy calling this guy a coward because he wasn't up front even though he offered to go up front with him. Not effective, but look who is effective. Gosh. The morbidly obese minority woman with these stupid codename kicks next door guns. She's the one who defeats the Godzilla monster. Yep. Okay, so uh, by the way, she just popped up. Like, she's not. In their team, when they're getting ready, she's not there. She's not seen at all until she suddenly pops in. And the funny thing, they go, It's working. Salvo's driving it back. It's like, what? So then they got to save the village. So then they give, they stop to give a, like a, like, We're not warriors. We're heroes. And our mission today is to, as it always been, to help people. You just described the job of a soldier. I don't know why... Why would you put someone with a, such a negative view of the military on a G.I. Joe book? It's insane. So, 
Then we get, uh, here's a scarlet in her purse puppy. You know, don't send the 250-pound muscular black man out into combat. Send the 300-pound fat Samoan woman. Um, by the way, he, he's a heavy machine gunner. So they literally didn't even need her. How was dinner? The usual. That bad, huh? Huh. <laughs> Ooh. It was a funny one. Um, so then we find out that um, she's captured the Baroness. Um, and she hadn't told anyone. This is an old secret prison. He's like, does anyone know? She hasn't even had a trial. You just can't keep her here indefinitely. It's un-American. If this gets out, she's not American and neither is the team anymore. Oh my gosh. So then here's a manic pixie dream girl bragging about herself. I was right. I'm always right. Uh, then we get, um, I don't even care. So then uh, we find out that I got to skip a page for the copyright strike, but or so I don't get one. But um, uh, what does Roadblock do? He immediately rats her out because, oh my God, there's a terrorist in a cell. Um, so then we get the uh, really badly done letters pages. This literally looks like a comic from 1995. So Aubrey is uh, answering the questions. And so... This really, really long uh, one it's like, uh, comes from Mickey Chartier. Um, I've been curious about something. The presence or lack of LGBT characters in G.I. Joe. Uh, so then he mentions a bunch of purse puppy gay characters and other things. And then uh, mentions that the two most kind of, what do you call it? Stereotypically gay looking characters. Uh, Xandar and Gung Ho, it's like, let's make them gay. Um, G.I. Joe has never had any sexuality in it, ever. Um, they've had little uh, couples, but they're very kind of almost chaste. You know, like Flint and Lady J, uh, Scarlet and Snake Eyes in the comics, Scarlet and Duke in the cartoons, and then the Baroness and uh, Destro, which kind of seems like it could be kind of like a sexy pairing. Uh, but it's never shown. <laughs> There's not even a hint of it. Um, but anyway, so, uh, this is how, um, Aubrey an uh, answers. So, first of all, it's just weird. So, it's like short, short, uh, letter. Answers twice as long as a letter. And then a really long letter. By the way, you can edit it. And it, and it starts off, Mickey, thank you so much for this extremely well thought epistle. Unfortunately, I'm running out of room to respond. So I want to skip right to your excellent question about LGBT characters in the crown jewel of the Hasbro universe. As you may have noticed, there's not been a lot of romance in G.I. Joe. Okay, so so while I believe that one of the best things about the G.I. Joe franchise is its inclusivity, and it's something I love exploring, it's somewhat more difficult to unambiguously, explicitly show a character's sexuality than it is to, say, feature a person with disabilities or a woman of color from another country. Especially when you're talking about a series like G.I. Joe, which has a lot more to do with laser adventures than amorous ones. Okay, first of all, th we, this is Aubrey just giving himself away. This is all about checking the box purse puppy diversity. So it's killing him that he can't make a, a gay joke. By the way, I have a gay member of the Jawbreakers. Guess which one? It never comes up because they're doing soldier mercenary stuff all the time. Um, but it's not killing me that I can't like reveal it and get some, uh, pats on the back or pats on the head for being so woke. Uh, it was just a story element I came up with when I was doing the backstory that never actually even gets mentioned. If you're a real writer, you do stuff. So this is like an alternate, this is like the Citizen verse of GI Joe. He could just say, you know what? Some of them are, but it never really comes up. Um, but he's like, he. This is he, look at how he describes character. He he doesn't describe Salvo's personality. He just says a woman of color from another country. Oh, and she's body diverse. That being said, I think it's absurd, unrealistic, calyx, and worst of all, boring to have an aspirational adventure team. Oh, he just called GI Joe. A real American hero. Let me remember if I can do the spiel from... G.I. Joe is the code name for America's daring, highly trained special missions force. Its purpose? 
to defeat Cobra, a ruthless terrorist organization determined to rule the world. I just did the whole spiel from the cartoon from 1984. Beautifully encapsulates what G.I. Joe is, their enemy, their whole raison d'etre. It's not an aspirational adventure team. That's like those DVDs with, with Barbie and her friends and they're all doing mountain climbing for no reason. He says, and worst of all, boring to have an aspirational adventure team in 2017 where everyone is locked into traditional heteronormative gender and sexuality roles. What? This is freaking G.I. Joe. It has a freaking sailor with a talking parrot. And what is... Okay, I'm going... We need these alt-lifestyle freakazoids out of comics. Just get out. Go back to your vape shops. Go back to your freaking... Ugh, delivering pizzas. I want you freak shows out of comics. Gone. Um, I don't want to read a book like that, and I certainly don't want to write one. Guess what? Nobody wants to read your book. It got canceled twice. I already know who each of my characters are in my head. And judging from savvy letters like this, I know that our fan base is smart and thoughtful enough to pick up what we're laying down without us getting ham-fisted or expository about it. Basically, he's saying Salvo is gay. He's saying, okay, I can't say who's gay, but I'm just going to design a character who looks like that, and you can figure out that she's a lesbian. So, uh, yeah. So, um, <laughs> I'm actually almost kind of speechless. I, uh... I can't believe it. I hate this comic so much. So, uh, G.I. Joe, a real American hero, given to a far-left extremist ideologue socialist obsessed with race, gender, first puppy demographics, and just... G.I. No. All right, thanks for watching. <laughs> Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the Super Chat and the Patreon. You're finding original content. And I'll have more videos up later today.